in our uh, next example here, we're going to solve the following system, and we're going to graph the solution trajectory. This is x equals x prime is equal to 3, negative 5, 5, negative 5. Uh, you'll notice that that's the exact same one as before. So we're going to start with our general solution from before. But now we've also got this initial condition. x of 0 is equal to 6, 15. So we're going to use that initial condition to um, find the values of the constants in the general solution from before. So let me write down what that general solution was. The general solution, uh, I'm just quoting this from, uh, I think it was example 3, where we solved this. So if you just tuned in for example 5 here, you want to go back and look at example 3, and you'll see where we solved this same matrix. We didn't have the initial condition, but we just used the matrix to get c1 e to the negative t times 4 cosine of 3t minus 3 sine of 3t over 5 cosine of 3t plus c2 e to the negative t times 3 cosine of 3t plus 4 sine of 3t over 5 sine of 3t. So that was our general solution uh, from example 3 using the same matrix. So that's still our general solution. I don't want to rehash all that because you can go back and look at the video for example 3. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in t is equal to 0. So we're going to use that value of t equals 0. So everywhere through here we're going to plug in t is equal to 0. And we're going to use the fact that e to the 0 is 1, cosine of 0 is 1, and sine of 0 is 0. So all the sine terms are going to drop out, all the cosine terms are just going to leave us with 1. So x of 0, plug in 0 everywhere, is c1 times e to the 0, so that's just 1. 4 cosine, so that's 4, minus 3 sine, which is 0. 5 cosine is 5, plus c2 times 3, uh, e to the 0, again drops out because it's 1. 3 cosine is 3, plus 4 sine is 0. 5 sine is 0. Okay, so that's supposed to be equal to 615. And what that really is doing is it's encoding a system of two equations into unknowns. So if I write out the first line there, I get uh, 4c1 plus 3c2 is equal to 6. Bottom line says 5c1 plus 0c2 is equal to 15. So that's obviously a pretty easy system to solve. The bottom line right there tells me that c1 is equal to 3. And if I plug that in up here, I get uh, 12 plus 3c2 is equal to 6. And so I would get c2 is equal to negative 2. So that gives me my c1 and c2. I'll plug those back into the general solution. Is my c1 was 3 e to the negative t times 4 cosine of 3t minus 3 sine of 3t over 5 cosine of 3t. Now my c2 was negative 2, so minus 2 e to the negative t times 3 cosine of 3t plus 4 sine of 3t over 5 sine of 3t. And I think I can combine those together. Um, so I'll have an e to the negative t everywhere. And if I look in the top, I see I've got 3 times 4 cosine. So that's a 12 cosine. Over here I've got minus 6 cosine. So that it leaves me with a net of 6 cosine 3t. Now, minus 9 sine and minus 8 sine over here because of the minus 2 outside. So, minus 9 minus 8 is minus 17 sine of 3t. And then in the bottom, I see I've got 15 cosine. 3t uh, minus 10 sine 
of 3t. So that's my solution. And I'm going to try to graph that. And remember, you want to graph it where you're plugging in multiples of pi over 2 into the sine and cosine. So I'm just going to say when 3t is 0, 3t is pi over 2, 3t is pi, 3t, 3t is 3 pi over 2, and 3t is 2 pi. Let me see what happens with each one. When 3t is 0, the sines drop out and I get the cosines. So I see I'll get 6 and 15. Can't write that as a fraction. That's really a vector there. So 6, 15. Pi over 2. The signs give me 1, so negative 17, negative 10. Pi will give me, uh, the cosines give me negative 1, so negative 6, negative 15. And the uh, 3t over, the, the 3 pi over 2 gives me, the signs give me negative 1, so 17 and 10. And the 2 pi will give me the same as if we were plugging in 0, so it'll be 6 and 15 again. So let me set up some axes and try to graph that. Oh, that's not straight at all. That looks a bit better. So I'll graph these by 3's. 3, 6, 9... 12, 15, 18, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So I start out at 6, 15. Let me graph 6, 15. 6 down, 6 over horizontally. There's my starting point there. Now negative 17, 10. Negative 17 is just short of negative 18. 10 is just up from uh, 9. Then I go to negative 6, negative 15. So end up down there. And finally, 17, 10. Um, sorry, negative 17, negative 10 is uh, negative 17, ne should have been negative 10. So that uh, takes me down about right there. And 17, 10 is, here's 17, and here is 10. And so I see I'm going to have basically an elliptical shape, because we know that it starts repeating after that. However, there is one aspect of this that I haven't taken into account, which is that there's an e to the negative t. So that e to the negative t, what happens is it takes that ellipse and it depresses it as it spirals around. So each, each time it spirals around, it's going to get smaller and smaller. Um, so let me draw the true graph in red. It does start, there's a t equals 0 there, but it gets smaller and smaller each time it travels around the origin. So that red graph is the true solution trajectory to this system. So let's go back and see what we did there. We started out with the uh, solution to the matrix equation, which is something we really figured out in example three. So if you don't remember where that came from, maybe go back and look at example three, and you'll see where we got this general solution. So I just copied that over from example three. But then we plugged in t equals zero, because that was the initial condition we were given, which meant the e to the negative t's, those all turned into one. The uh, cosines of three t's, those all turned into one. And so those are my, that's where I got the 4 and 5 here, and that's where I got the 3 here. 
And then all the sine terms, sine of 0 is 0, so those all kind of dropped away when we plugged in t equals 0. So I got c1 times 4, 5 plus c2 times 3, 0 is equal to 6, 15. And that resolves into two equations in c1 and c2, which are very easy to solve. c1 right away, plug that back in, plug back in, plug c1 back into the first equation, we get c2. So I put this c1 in to the general solution and the c2 into the general solution. And then I gathered like terms, I got all my cosines together and all my sines together, which is where I got this 6 and this 17. That 6, for example, came from 3 times 4, which is 12, minus 2 times 3. So 12 minus 6 gave me that 6. That 17 came from 3 times negative 3 and negative 2 times 4. So that's how I got negative 9, negative 8 gave me negative 17. That's where that came from. And then uh, the 15 cosine 3t and 10 sine 3t, that just came from the bottom of each one of those vectors. So that was my actual solution. And then to graph it, I plugged in values of t that would make 3t equal to multiples of pi over 2. So 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. I plugged in those values of t, and I got specific points here. And I plotted each one of those points. There's the first one, uh, there's the second one, there's the third one, here's the fourth one, and then it started to repeat itself after the fourth one. I drew my first blue ellipse, which is what the solution would look like if there were no e to the negative t there. But since there is an e to the negative t there, I know that that ellipse is actually getting smaller and smaller as it travels around. So it's not a true ellipse, it's an elliptic spiral that's getting smaller and smaller and sort of spiraling in towards the origin. And so that red curve there is our actual solution curve, which describes the solution trajectory to this system. So that's the end of our lecture on complex eigenvalues. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about what to do when you have repeated real eigenvalues. This is all part of the uh, series on systems of differential equations. And uh, in general, this is part of our series of lectures on differential equations here on educator.com. My name is Will Murray. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.